a very good morning to everyone. I am Arun Damaran, working as an assistant manager at Dinsa Robotics Europe. And first of all, I would like to thank Ross Consortium for this opportunity, and also EPA Fraunhofer for providing the opportunity to present our collaborative robot yesterday, and also have a hands-on experience. And today, um, I'm going to present uh, our collaborative robot, Kobota, which is also ROS enabled. And uh, the most interesting point is it's most, uh, yeah, useful and flexible for education and research. Before I go uh, uh, into the technical details, I would like to explain who we are as Denso. Denso has been established as a, a separate entity from Toyota Motor Group in uh, 1949. We have started developing robots from 1967 onwards. In 2018, we call ourselves as one of the Fortune 500 companies in the world, and one of the top three automotive parts suppliers worldwide, and we are also a market leader in the small segment assembly robots. Uh, a little bit of uh, financial figures, we have an annual revenue of about $48.1 billion uh, uh, every year. And uh, we have about 170,000 employees worldwide, and we invest about 9% of our revenue for research and development, and we have about 38,000 patents worldwide. Our core business domains include automotive industry, as we also uh, yeah, manufacture uh, uh, automotive components for almost all automobiles uh, manufacturers in the world. And we are also into consumer products um, like uh, smart grids for homes and also new business uh, fields such as energy management, electrical power assist, security, healthcare, uh, biotechnology, and also agricultural technology. And we also uh, um, have the industrial products, and that's where we pitch in. Uh, we have Denso robots. Uh, and also, um, not many are aware of it, um, Denso is the inventor of QR codes. Um, uh, in general, and uh, it was developed for high-speed component scanning. And we also provide QR code relevant scanners, which is also available in the market. And uh, we also have industrial controllers, such as PLCs, uh, which we sell as OEM product. To get a bit more into Denso Robotics, we are uh, robotics pioneers. That is, we have uh, more than 50 years of experience in developing uh, robots. And we are also... Uh, a trusted worldwide OEM uh, supplier as industrial robot um, for industrial robots in the, uh, uh, in the market. And we have installed more than 100,000 uh, robots worldwide. And uh, the most important point is we are, I mean, Denso Automotive, we are also the biggest user of dense robots internally. That is, uh, we have more than 20,000 robots installed in our own factories. It means we know in and out of robots. That means we know what is the pain of uh, uh, downtime and we always manufacture the robots with high quality and precision. And the tagline for our robots is small, compact, precise, and high speed. And our automotive uh, uh, application domains include assembly, packaging, measurement, pharmaceutical, medical, and automotive parts. Uh, yeah, uh, there are no limitations except uh, the range of our robots. And uh, as you can see uh, on the left side, we have a six axis robot with a payload of uh, starting from 3 kilos with a 430 millimeter reach until uh, 13 kilos with 1.3 meter reach. And we also have SCARA robots with 350 millimeter reach with 5 kilos payload until um, 1 meter and 20 kilo uh, payload. So I would like to uh, give you a few words, a few information about uh, Kobota, and we call it as a ROS enabled, and I will come to it why we call it as a ROS enabled robot. So Kobota, which you can see, and uh, most of you also seen a uh, demonstration yesterday, and it is a lightweight robot, and especially a collaborative robot, and it has six axes plus an additional um, axis for electrical gripper, uh, has a maximum reach of 342.5 uh, millimeter reach, and a repeatability of uh, 50 microns, a payload of 500 grams, and uh, yeah, it also includes an autofocus camera and an electric clipper inbuilt. And the controller, which you can see, is already on the bottom. Uh, oh, so I think this should be the. Sorry, um, the the bottom uh, of the robot uh, includes um, the controller, and we call Kobota because uh, of the. Uh, Name collaboration robot for tech, collaboration robot technology for ARM, 
And I would like to uh, give you a few key features of uh, Scobota. Scobota, as such, is a safe design. It's a full collaborative robot. There are no sharp edges, and uh, for sure, you will not hurt yourself with this robot. And uh, yeah, we comply with all uh, safety standards and uh, um, uh, functional safety. I think I will not go too much into, de into that detail. Um, it is also easy to use, and you have already seen, uh, most of you have seen yesterday that uh, you could create programs, switch over applications in no time. I would also uh, like to explain the portable feature of uh, Kobota. It is a lightweight, compact, could be placed on a trolley or could be placed on a ROS enabled mobile platform. As you can see in the right is a small video how to switch over uh, Kobota for different applications in no time. Just plug in, start your second application. Since it's compact and portable, we even had a wild idea of uh, uh, installing uh, Kobota over a drone. We have also displayed in different uh, fairs. And the fourth concept which I want to also explain here is the open platform, which is an advantage of Kobota. That means we provide opportunities for everyone to use the Kobota. That's like a from first level user uh, to a robot expert. And uh, with respect to the programming ad advantages, uh, you can use uh, Kobota World, which is an Android app, to program our robots. If you want to get uh, uh, more into details of, or if you want to develop a complicated program, you can uh, use a dense proprietary software called as, uh, I mean, using PackScript. Or otherwise, uh, for people who want to use a PC control, um, you will be able to uh, use any high-level language you want. Via Orin, you will be able to control our robots. Or from a non-Windows platform, you can use Linux to control our robots. We also offer Kobota as an as a OSS type. I'll come back to it in the next uh, slides. Uh, we also have a, a variety of possibilities of getting connected to vision using Kobota World, which, is, which has a small feature detection uh, method. And we also have an easy vision picking software to make uh, uh, simple applications, simple vision applications. And uh, it uses a library, uh, uh, which is OpenCV, which is already installed in the controller. That means you don't need an external PC to create your own um, vision applications. We also have a possibility of connecting Canon Vision Edition to make much more complex uh, vision processing. The beauty with it is you will be able to uh, make your vision applications and also control Kubota directly from the Canon Vision software. That is, you don't have to write any more new codes uh, into the controller. And uh, you can also uh, quite easily incorporate different uh, vision systems uh, from, yeah, such as uh, Coconex, uh, Canon, Kians, or almost every vision uh, manufacturer uh, right now available. Um, to coming to the control possibilities of uh, Kobota, you can control a robot from a Windows environment using any high-level language, or you even use a Denso proprietary uh, software. Coming to non-Windows, this is also quite easily uh, controllable from um, iOS or even Android platform, or from Linux. So we have been uh, actively involved uh, using ROS from 2012 onwards. And our first demonstration was made, in, uh, made at IREX uh, in 2013. And from then on, we are steadily improving ourselves and also developing new um, functionalities and also drivers for ROS. As um, you can see on the right side is a small uh, information from uh, Wiki ROS, also uh, ROS web page. Uh, you will be able to see our Denso packages, what we offer. Before I get more into detail about uh, open platform, how we do it, I would also uh, like to give you a short overview uh, of our control structure from the application layer perspective. Um, on the left side, you can see uh, a Denso controller, and we have a, a basically a Windows operating system. On the top, we have a virtual robot controller, which is handling the path generation and also motion planning. You can use any high-level language, create your own uh, user interface, and you can control our robot controller through an interface called as Orion, which I'll also speak about it a bit later. Um, the Orion acts as a middleware or a uh, gateway in this case, which, uh, and the whole scenario is a closed scenario. 
And if you want to, I mean, coming back to the open platform, we are opening up with respect to um, Linux environment or an external operating system. And you can develop your own uh, uh, codes from Linux or ROS. And the data is being sent to our controller through a binary controller access protocol, which is called as BCAP. Uh, to explain about BCAP, I will also have to explain uh, the functional flow, which you can see below. Uh, to make it simple, BCAP, you have two different modes. We have a BCAP mode, where you will be uh, sending commands from an external PC or device. Uh, we have a BCAP listener in our controller, which accepts these packets or messages in about four, four millisecond uh, cycle time. Uh, it reads it, converts into a, a, a motion, and then uh, the motion planning is done by our VRC, and um, you will be executing the motion. Otherwise, you can also use a, a BCAP slave mode, which is the second option. That is, you will be able to create your own path, use your own kinematics to control our robots. And that's why um, uh, this is exactly the where uh, the ROS is uh, uh, quite, uh, yeah, uh, you'll be able to control via move it. Um, with an open platform, to control our Kubota from a ROS-based system is done in a, in a simple way. That is, you have a Linux-based PC uh, where ROS is installed, and you will be able to control uh, our robot uh, by sending BCAP messages to our controller using uh, yeah, any um, ROS-based um, um, systems like Arvis or Movit. And uh, on the left side, you are uh, able to see how uh, the functional system works. That is, from ROS, uh, in our controller, you have a BCAP service which receives the messages and executes the motion. And uh, you can see also uh, different colors that what, um, uh, what uh, uh, should be done by the customer and what is offered by Denso. And uh, the best example of uh, um, the first method is the DragonBot software, which you also see, saw yesterday. And the DragonBot software is uh, uh, developed over a ROS platform for a simple graphical setup and also programming of robotic applications. And DragonBot works perfectly with Kobota, but not only with Kobota, uh, also with other Denso robots. The key benefits of this software is everyone can operate and program the robots, and you don't need prior uh, IT skills or extensive training to do it. And it is also uh, five folds uh, faster uh, to program than the normal robot programming. And it is also cost efficient when it comes to uh, flexibility within uh, different robot tasks. And you can also find the website, uh, dragonbot.com, to get more information. And the second method, what we uh, provide here, is an OSS type. That's an open source software type. What we do here is um, understanding the value and the potential of ROS. Denso has decided to provide an OSS type that is like a blank uh, controller. That means it is not uh, with any operating system installed. You will be able to uh, purchase this hardware directly, install your own uh, uh, software like Linux on the top ROS, use Movit to control our robots in a much simpler way. That's, what, uh, that's exactly what we tried to demonstrate yesterday. And this is especially thought for ROS enthusiasts. And it also shows our interest towards ROS. And a uh, quite simple way, you will be using ROS and, uh, to control, um, uh, your B, uh, control your messages uh, sent via BCAP to a, a controller. And the BCAP script takes care of it uh, further. And uh, you can also see here what is offered by uh, Denso and what is offered by uh, what, what needs to be developed by the customer. And uh, you can find a few links to our packages uh, in the wiki ROS. Or also, you can download the packages from GitHub. To explain what are the packages we offer, uh, we have about seven packages what is available from Denso Robot uh, ROS. Uh, two packages for simulation, four packages for controlling real Denso Robot, and one packet for um, path generation. I think I don't have to uh, go into too much details of the packages. And you can see on the right side, uh, on the picture, that is, for simulation, you will be using ROS messages to create your simulation. And uh, for real-time uh, communication, you will be sending BCAP messages where the BCAP server receives it and executes. That's the real-time um, scenario. Of course, Movit can be used for simulation and also real control of the robot. And a uh, few steps to uh, work with uh, ROS and Denso. 
like you have to install the uh, prerequisite DensorOS package, and you can also use uh, you can use Move it uh, later. Um, it's an RVS plugin to um, uh, to start up uh, to launch the uh, um, launch the development of programming. And uh, we, in, as a standard, provide um, packages for VS060 robot type. Uh, but for other robots, we also have a, a ROS converter, um, which is a tool uh, from Denso uh, directly. That is, you can create any robot, uh, any 6x robot in, in general. Uh, you can create your robot type, convert into a, uh, convert the WPJ, uh, that's a WinCaps project file, to a URDF format, copy this URDF to Unix, uh, Linux, and uh, start your simulation. This is a small example what we did uh, with VS060 and ROS with obstacle uh, detection, path planning, and also the motion we are done with uh, MoveIt. Of course, Python was uh, used to develop the whole uh, movement. I would also uh, like to present here another practical example which was uh, done um, uh, using ROS platform. And in Senso, uh, camera from IDS was used, 3D uh, platform. And also we have used uh, Denso SDK and also OpenCV um, and a point cloud library. And uh, for motion planning, uh, OpenRay was used. You can see the camera detects a hole on the plate. I think the video is quite self-explanatory. So you detect a hole, uh, make a uh, final check, and identify uh, a few more um, um, uh, drilling positions, and it is being drilled. Just ignore uh, the screwdriver used. <laughs> It's not be directly used in the industry, but this is uh, done as a showcase or proof of concept. To uh, get in further, I uh, have to also speak about how uh, does Denso interconnect with uh, different devices. We use uh, Orion um, uh, platform, which is uh, acting as a middleware or a gateway. That is, you have an integrated development environment. You um, can use any high-level languages to interconnect with different uh, devices, or you can use um, di you can connect with different devices from different applications. So on the right side, you have a um, uh, architecture um, which you can see on the bottom uh, that you have number of devices. You have device interfaces; we call it as providers, device providers, and uh, you are connecting with the Orion engine. And on the top, you have application interfaces; we call it as application providers. That could be uh, used to uh, quite easily interface different, uh, um, uh, uh, interconnect different applications with different devices. And what we find here um, is a missing link. That's a ROS provider. And if this could happen, um, this will be a very big um, uh, bridge between ROS environment and also Orion, wherein uh, both uh, Orion and also ROS can uh, complement each other and uh, grow better. And this, if this happens, yeah, um, Orion uh, is used as an 
IoT base for our uh, dense robotic solutions, wherein um, almost all uh, major software players and major devices could be interconnected. And uh, that gives us an uh, opportunity to uh, get into cloud platform too. To summarize, uh, Denso Robots and uh, Kubota provides wide possibilities to uh, use with, um, uh, for, for ROS users. And uh, um, just by focusing on uh, OSS type of Kubota, we uh, are uh, pushing ourselves, uh, focusing towards ROS, and we are still steadily supporting the development of ROS drivers and libraries, and hope uh, you also uh, participate and also support us with the development. And uh, thank you very much.